And let's not waste any time and get right into the only match of the day. Hey, everybody. Quick to live. Some of you might be going, hey, this wasn't supposed to start 45 minutes ago. Yes. Here's the biggest surprise of the day. French SWAT. No show. Failed to submit their rosters in time, giving their sixth free win of 2023. And so here we are. For our only match of the day, we could be here for four games, everybody. This could be quick in, quick out. Either way, we'll do it together. You and me. I don't need to do that song again, do I? I've done that song plenty of times. Let's talk about some of these rosters for our two teams that we're featuring today. Seam Esports and Tropical Gaming. Seam Esports, as you can see, Z Quentin currently out there. The rest of his team includes Hugo, Booter, Paolo, Newbie, and Alpha. Tropical Gaming with SB coming off of his uh, pretty solid coaching performance at the Superverse. Presented by Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5, I think is what it was. Full name. Alongside Inthril, Titan, Bob the Rock, Jors, and Jonah. Will Jonah have a good season this season now that uh, both Magic Archer and Bomb Tower are both nerfed? Is it the season for E Golem again? We'll find out. But not here. Not right now. I'm a little surprised to see Lava Loon. But maybe. Maybe SB was assuming after the Lava nerf that Lava Loon wouldn't be expected. But also you have to imagine people are going to keep on running this Minor XC deck or the Drill XC deck because Magic Archer got nerfed. So, I mean, around and around and around we go. So far, so good here for the Lava Loon, though. So far, so very good, in fact. And that's going to be a GG. You'd think that NATO Tesla Poison Executioner Ice Spirit would beat Lava Loon. I was getting some things set up. I didn't really see if it was a mistake that happened. Either way, game number one for Tropical Gaming. Let's turn this music down just a little bit. It's a little, it's a little high for this stage in the show. For those of you just joining us, including me, bands, Goblin Gang, both sides band Pump, both sides band Evil Recruits, and La Sparky. I am not going to ask you that question today, Crazy Edits. Did you edit anything, though? Mo Light will play today. Well, look at the teams that are playing Zahir, and then look at the team rosters and see if Molai is on either of those teams that are playing today. And again, there were supposed to be more teams playing today. As, oh, we'll come back over here for a second. It was supposed to be Olimpo Squad versus French Squad. Oh, my green screen setup. I, I'm moving. I'm in, the, I'm in the middle of moving offices, so I am on a green screen today. And my green screen setup is just... I need to adjust my chroma filter just a tiny bit so I can see some... Let's take that back a little bit. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. It's eh, starting to look a little bit dicey. Right around there, maybe? And maybe I should just mess with some of the smoothness. I should have done this beforehand, huh? 
but I don't use a ton of... I don't use green screen often, but today I needed to. Today it was necessary. Um, evil recruits is madness. It's like Goblin Giant Sparky. You do the same thing, get damaged somehow. Fair enough. Yeah. Why are there so few viewers? Because we just started two minutes ago. I'm sure people will trickle in as the alerts go out. But we did just start literally about maybe six minutes ago. Let's go ahead and jump into gameplay, folks. And it's, we're, only, we're only doing the one match, so we could be here for a very short amount of time. Balance changes live today. How do players react? Dylan Fraden asking to put a comment on the screen. No, Dylan. Oh, darn it. It happened. Ah, uh, how do comments pop up? I control that with a button. I choose what comments to show. Normally, I do a pretty good job. Every once in a while, I accidentally misclick and put something up I don't want to put up. But so far, so good today. Every comment I've seen that I've wanted to put up has gone up. And I have not put up any accidental comments. A fireball for the Mother Witch will be nice. But newbie running stabs into Goblin Giant Mother Witch. Although not many other other really great targets for the Mother Witch, so. Oh, that's interesting. I, didn't, I hadn't really thought about the Goblin Giant Monk interaction. Oh, I like I like what Inthril did there, because he forced out a lot of extra expenditure. But he's not gonna get in front of the monk here, unfor that's gonna be a really unfortunate exchange for Inthril. Because he really would have liked to get the goblins in front of the monk, but not a problem for newbie. No building, so you have to rely on fish boys to be pulling these goblin giants. But then the rage will do that. Monk is going to be nice. You do have two nice controls here for the goblin giants, between the monk and the fisherman. So that is helpful for sure. You just have to be very careful with using goblins defensively. And this is a bunch of stuff in front. And this is this is the push you're looking for with this Goblin Giant beatdown deck, right? And just get a bunch of things around it. Rage it all up. But again, newbie doing an okay job. Not letting the damage get out of hand. Maybe probably the best way to put that, right? The damage is staying under control. I think I had the Twitch chat up somewhere. Where did I put the Twitch chat? There you are, Twitch chat. Are the balance changes live? I believe they are live. I believe that they are live and kicking. They, I think maintenance happened overnight. If I remember correctly, maintenance happened overnight. Which means look out, everybody. Will we see Evo Bats today? I doubt it. I've heard they're trash. I've not played with them yet. But I've heard they are very, very bad. Little lane switch here for Inthril, who's just not able to find a way through. And the Mother Witch, really not a factor in this one, although does get the Monk down. This is big. This is big. Monk is out. Dark Prince is still up. And now full send opposite direction. Mother Witch actually able to do something here from a minute. Fireball to the middle. And those fish boys ain't doing nothing. Those fish boys ain't doing nothing, son. Goodbye to your fishes. And that is going to be a Goblin Giant getting a ton of damage. And I don't know if Newbie can really come back from this. Oh, it's 20 to 12 seconds left. He definitely can. Gets a Royal Giant out at the end, at the very end. But you're playing into, yeah, a mini P.E.K.K.A. And problems. GG, well played. In Thrill, did have a rage, which is basically how you describe this deck. It has a rage. Kaboom. As Richie the Sea, local Los Angeles, San Fernando Valley comedy legend, would say, kaboom. All right, that was set number one. We could be here for a very short amount of time, folks. It all depends on if Seam can get it 
back in rhythm here in set number two, King of the Hill. Bob the Rock, Jors, and Inthril up for Tropical Gaming. Quentin, Paolo, and Hugo for Seam Esports as we go into King of the Hill. And again, one more time, folks, for those of you who didn't hear it earlier, um, French SWAT did not submit their roster in time, and so for the sixth time in 2023, they give a free win to their opponent. I do know that they require a little early uh, submission, right, compared to other leagues, but also this one has production and has to get stuff ready for a camera, so, you know, you have a week to know, you have a week to submit your roster. They just keep forgetting to do that. Rich is the Bruce Buffer of CR. What an interesting choice. The Bruce Buffer. It's an interesting way of putting that because he's the in-ring announcer. I would have thought myself more of the Mauro Ranallo or the Mike Goldberg or the John Anik. Mauro Ranallo is my favorite of all those, though. Mauro is great. If you don't know Mar who Mauro Ranallo is, Mauro Ranallo is a uh, combat sports play-by-play -play commentator which is how I got started in the business, right, was doing combat sports. Um, he worked primarily with, like, Pro Elite, like Elite XC, Strike Force. Um, I think he might have done... He does a lot, did a lot of stuff in Japan. I think he might have done that Affliction event, the Fedor one. Uh, now he does a bunch of... Now he still does a lot of the boxing, a lot of the Dazen stuff. He does, does stuff for the WWE, um, AEW, I think. He's all over the place. When are we going to see the debut of Rich and CRL? Uh, never... Let's go ahead and jump into game one of King of the Hill. I mean, you'll see me commentating CRL, but I don't have the skill, sub, skill level to play with these guys. Islam Makachev or Charlie Olives? I mean... Hmm. I mean, if I'm betting, probably Islam, but... Oh, Bobby! Bobby Rocky, what are you doing there, kiddo? SB saying, will we see the emer an emergency buff for the first time? An emergency buff. What do you mean, to the bats? No, there's no, there's no such thing as an emergency buff. I mean, they might buff it, but... Who is the creator of CRL Story? What does that mean? I don't know what that means, Zahir. Who is the creator of CRL Story? Can you rephrase that? Yeah, I don't know about emergency buff. I mean, we might see a quick buff to the bats. They might get buffed fairly soon. Um, but they're going to give it at least some time to see what happens. But no, emer emergency emergencies. Buffing a card is never an emergency. Nerfing a card is an emergency. And here goes Bobby with his little royal giant, for which he is so well known. He's not going to get a lot out of this one, though. How's the weather? It's pleasant. Let's see, I'll tell you the exact weather today. Uh, Fisherman, nicely pulled. Good timing. Um, let me go see the uh, the weather today. I'll tell you how it is. I went outside, it didn't feel bad. And officially, oh, what a day. Maybe I'll go play some disc golf today. My back's hurting a bit. Right now, it's 79 degrees, partly cloudy. The high is going to be 93 in the late afternoon. Gotta love it. Nice little reflection on the... Firecracker to get chip damage on the tower. What is Bob's plan to get past the Inferno Towers? Is it just this? This might be it. This might be the plan. Got to stop that Hoggy. Nope. Inferno Tower cycled back too. And Bob cannot find a way to get past the Eye of Sauron. Here we go. Now we're in. Now we're in sudden death. Sets up. Sets up one. Gonna try to go for the one two. That's a good electro spirit. That's a nice electro spirit. I like seeing that out of Bob. Quentin doing a great job. Good prediction log from Bob though. And goes for the firecracker rather than the inferno tower. And he's not going 1-2 here. Fisherman nowhere near that. Has to stun. Does get the stun. Does get the pull. Does the hog shoot. And it does. Big hog shot here. Can Bobby find a way behind this? A 
That's such an interesting way of sequencing all that. Looking just for the fireball damage here. Wants to stop the, the hog from connecting. Big connections continuing to happen for Quentin. Quentin's doing a great job of pressuring the hog at inopportune times and making sure he's always getting back to these Inferno Towers. The Monk is doing a, doing some good work here too because he's getting the Monk onto the RG before it can get in shooting rhythm most of the time. So this evolved Royal Giant just cannot find a way through. I mean, 1062 is still pretty darn good. Pretty impressive, that damage coming in from Bob so far. Fireball down. 19 seconds left. Bob can't really stop this hog very well though, can he? Definitely can't stop an Earthquake. There is no stopping Earthquakes, and that hog's going to connect. GG, well played. Quentin finally gets Sea Monsters on the board. Have you guys, coming up next, by the way, is going to be Jaws for Tropical Gaming. Have y'all started playing with the balance changes yet? I have, not I have not opened the game yet today. So I haven't had a chance to experience the balance changes. Um, have you played with Evo Bats yet? I, haven't, I have not yet either. I'm going to... Spend some time to go get them. I'm going to go unlock them here pretty soon and go play with them. I'm excited to see what it's like. But I have not tried them out yet. Um, looking at the balance changes that are now live officially. Um, let, oh, did my, my chat must have lagged for a second because there was no chat for a minute. And then suddenly like a bunch of chat all slammed into my chat. So here we go. I need help making a deck. There's plenty of, 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 of advice online for that, Muhammad. Um, check out Royal API. There's plenty of decks there. Good morning, says Zeroko. Good morning to you. Emergency in terms of cash. Hilarious. Um, the creator of the idea of CRL game. I still don't know what you mean. Like, like your live show always make my day. Oh, thank you, Zaheb. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to understand what your question is. Um, who is the creator of CRL? It's Supercell. I don't know who specifically came up with the idea there. Um, ladders, you have a recruiter or whatever again. Yeah, it's annoying. Uh, I know, I remember the, the, the Miner had emergency balance change, had a speed and nerf and HP buff. Here we go. Why are those things banned? Because those are the bands that were chosen by the teams. Where are you at ladder now? I don't know. I haven't played since the reset, really. Um, Evo bats are decent. They simply have on a win condition on their own. Yeah, just the question is, is it worth them taking up the evolution slot? Right? That's the big question. Only one chart a season for free to play is way, is way too less. Now, I've been saying for a while that I think that it should be. What's my personal best? In old, in Legacy Ladder, 6606. I don't actually know what my personal best is on, rank, on ranked. I've made Ultimate Champion a bunch, but like I don't really push after I make Ultimate Champion. Maybe I need to start doing that sometime. When's World Finals? That's going to be November 24th through 26th in Helsinki, Finland. He means who created Clash Royale. Yeah, I don't know I don't know that story, actually. That's an interesting story. But I know it's part of the uh, Clash uh, the Clash universe. Hey, Rich, watched you on Super Vroosh last night. You made this, the casters look like amateurs. Well, I mean, that's a, a thank you. I'm glad that you really liked that, liked me on the Superverse. Um, but, you know, they were brought in as celebrity casters. They were not brought in to be expert casters. Courage is a big-time streamer content creator and a super professional caster in the games that he's familiar with, especially, uh, obviously, really well-known. I played COD um, was his main, his big casting breakout. So Courage is an absolute professional. Leslie's never done casting before. Um, they, you know, the Superverse thing is a marketing event paid for by Samsung. So they brought in some fun personalities, and I loved working with Courage, loved working with Leslie, and I was brought in to be the expert on the games. I had to really do my homework and get a whole lot more well-versed in the esports stuff for Clash of Clans and Brawl Stars. Like, I was working all week to get caught up on stuff that I can do there. But, yeah, their job was to be there and have fun, and my job was to be the, be the expert on everything. So I thought they did a fine job. Obviously, Courage is more experienced as an actual caster. Leslie, again, first time doing it, but had fun. What different a professional caster with a celebrity caster? Well... A celebrity caster isn't there because they're a professional commentator who does commentary for a living or an expert in the game. They're there because I'm a, they're a celebrity, right? Like, if, you, if we did a Clash Royale event where I was casting alongside Messi, right, then you'd be like, oh, you'd be like, oh, cool, I get to watch Messi talk about Clash Royale 
even though he doesn't actually know the game at all, right? And he wouldn't be there to provide insider analysis. He'd be there to be entertaining and to, you know, be someone that people want to see. That's a good fireball out of Quentin. Am I going to Finland? Yes, of course I'm going to Finland. I am one of the, I've been a caster for CRL since 2018. It's been six years. I'm definitely gonna go to Finland and do uh, do my job. What does Courage if usually know about Clash Royale? Not very much, but that wasn't the point, right? That was not a an eSports, that was not CRL. They were brought in. Now, you guys also might not know this if you didn't pay attention, but that event was broadcast on the Clash Royale channel, the Clash of Clans channel, the Brawl Stars channel, the Samsung channel, on Courage's channel to his own to his own community, on Fusely's channel to her community, and was streamed on the channel of every single person competing in that event. Right? So that was a... Yes, there was a nice big prize pool there to attract attention, but that was, uh, you know, the whole point of that was it was sponsored by the Samsung Galaxy Z Note 5, right? So enjoy it for what it was, which was a really fun event with some really cool action, mixing different games, and I had a great time casting. I had a great, I had a completely, honestly, great time working with Courage and, and Leslie, and would totally do it again. Nice win here for Jors to get things back in the tropical gaming side of things. And there you go. All right, next up will be Paolo versus Jors. All right, let me go ahead and continue talking to some of this chat here for a second. Uh, let me see. Why are those troops banned? Uh, I think I answered this before, but because each team goes through their game plan and bans cards either to just because they're annoying or because they want to run decks that that card's strong against or because they think that that limits the deck pool of the opponents and they can better get matchups, whatever it might be. Lots of reasons to do specific bans. Um, I used Evo Bats today. Graveyard deck. I don't think they're broken. I just think they're good in certain situations. Good for RG if e Spirit's used early to reset an Inferno Dragon. Interesting. Um, Evo Bats do not deserve to take the Evo spot in most decks, especially now that there's a decent amount of Evos that can be used in all different kinds of decks. Yeah. Well, eventually there's going to be, like, I think it's going to be more more interesting as time goes on with the Evo stuff. Um, is there a VOD or something? I would love to see that. Yes, look up Superverse. Um, you can watch it on the Clash Royale channel. Um, yeah, it showed. Didn't know you knew so much about Clash of Clans and Brawl. I mean, I used to play Brawl. I've, I've, I played Brawl a lot the first year it was out. Um, but then I had to focus on Clash Royale stuff. And I still play Clash of Clans to this day. I am Town Hall 11. That tournament was at Town Hall 11. Um, but I did also spend the week really grinding those two games. I did a 90-minute coaching session with Eric Onehive, who's a Clash of Clans competitive person, where he really gave me some good insight on Town Hall 11 competitive. And I did a 90-minute coaching session with Coach Corey from Tribe Gaming, who really helped me out a lot with understanding the brawl competitive scene and like focusing on certain things that were that were really useful for me as a caster. So um, I'm going to keep on studying those games for in case more opportunities come up. But uh, yeah, it was really, really fun. I was I was surprised at how fun casting Clash of Clans competitive was. Um, that was actually a, a much more exciting and much more fun than I anticipated. And I, I look forward to a chance to do it again sometime. Same with Brawl. But Clash of Clans surprised me more than Brawl did. Um, let's see. Continue, let me hit some more chat while we're waiting for our next game. Actually, great insight. Thanks. Good luck with your casting, Rich. I mean, I think I've had pretty good luck. I'm, I'm six years into an esports casting career that I got while I was still making thirty thousand dollars a year, and uh, my commentary career now is over a decade. There we go. I think I'm. I feel pretty good. I think the luck has been good so far. Why aren't they banning spells? No idea. What was your favorite CRL season so far in terms of hosting the players, just being in the venue? Um, actually, season one, 2018, was really, really fun. Um, I would love to go back and do that season again with the knowledge I have now, because I was so new to Clash Royale from a competitive standpoint. The the team that created CRL really saw the long-term potential in bringing me in. Um, obviously, I got a lot of flack that first season for not having the depth of game knowledge that I that I would have liked to have. Um, but they saw that, this, that that was a long-term play, not a short-term play. And I'm really grateful for that. And I think that 
that overall, I think that people are pretty happy with me being here long term. But I would love to go back and redo Season 1 with the knowledge I have now. That would be tremendous. Um, I really enjoyed Season 2. Um, the, there were a lot of production challenges that year that made it really difficult. It was really draining season two, right? The 2019 year. Um, but being on set with the teams was fun and World Finals was a blast in LA. Like a really fun World Finals to cast. Um, it's hard to compare because we only had to, got to do two seasons where the full, the two years where the full season was live in a studio. And then 2020 and beyond, we've been remote the entire time. Which is in many ways easier, but also in many ways not as fulfilling as being there with everybody. Uh, but I would say I will say that World Finals last year was something absolutely special, and I'm looking forward so much to World Finals this year. I mean, every World Finals has been really special, um, but there was something about last year's World Finals that that hit different. Um, let's see. You never know. Maybe I said main caster. Maybe says Death Adder looking at the Twitch side. Uh, this guy on Twitch who I can't. I'm not gonna put his name on screen because his name is inappropriate. Um, CRL teams was the best. Um, yeah, I mean, I've said many times that I prefer teams, but I understand why we don't have teams anymore. And there's a lot of reasons other than was it really fun to watch that teams was no longer, no longer made a lot of sense. And I've gone, I've kind of litigated that ad nauseum at this point. Um, let's see. Can we freeze the monk ability using freeze? Uh, I don't actually know how that works. What is GKR? Is there an in-person finals, two yearly finals? Sorry, I don't watch these always. Um, there's not in person, but there will be a yearly final at the end of all this. I forget the exact formatting stuff. I'll go find the rule book. Give me a moment, and I'll go find that rule book. Where is the full rule book? Here we go. Um, GKR League. So this is just the autumn split. Let's see if it says anything about the um, end of the year. Oh, this is getting kind of close here. Walmart are not connected. Let me focus on the game here for a second. Most of these have been blowouts. This one's actually pretty close. Although this minor might make it not close at all anymore. Yep, that's going to be a GG well played. Never mind. Wait a second. Wait a second. One HP. Can the RG do it? Come on, RG gets one. Does it get two? No, it doesn't. Oh, that would have been so much fun. Wait, could a lightning do this in time? Could a lightning do the No. Ah, uh, a one HP would have been so fun. What a close game. That was a blast. All right, let's come back out here for a second. Oh, we are still in King of the Hill. Um, and now I think we're down to Hugo for uh, for scene, right? All right, let's go back over here. Um, Mo, Morton, Moogie, Messi. Who's winning CRL? Messi, obviously. Um, let's see. It was an awesome event. Remember, she was honestly disappointed with Leslie commentating. Well, I mean, Leslie wasn't there to be a commentator. She was there to be a, to react and have fun and be a part of that. If Look, not everyone's for everyone. Um, but, yeah, uh, you know, she was there to react and have fun with, and I thought that she and Courage did what they were did what they were asked to do very, very well. Um, but having never been a commentator before, jumping into games that you don't really know very well, like I was, I was happy with it, and also that was part of my job was to guide the broadcast in terms of the, the actual gameplay action. Didn't skip a beat in Brawl or Clash of Clans, in my opinion. I, you know, in Clash of Clans, I felt very, very good. In Brawl, there were like a couple times where. You know, again, like I was spinning up on Brawl. I was catching up to Brawl Stars. Um, but the, uh, let's see, where can you watch the Clash of Clans and Brawl you did? Um, hold on, I'll get it for you guys right now. Uh, let me go to the official Clash Royale website. Um, hold on. Uh, there were a couple times they asked questions in Brawl that I just did not know the answer to. Um, just because I was trying to study so much in such a short amount of time. Um, so, yeah, that was challenging. That was challenging. Here is... Don't go leave right now, but go ahead and save this link. Here is the here's the event that I cast. Um, big event. Big event. $100,000 event. So there it is. Um, yeah, I was. it was definitely... There were a couple times they asked me, asked me questions in, um, in Brawl that I just didn't know the answer to. Because I was like, oh... One time they asked me something about Colette, and I was like, oh, I, like, didn't get to Colette in the cramming that I was doing. Uh, am I making a sukkah? No, I am not. Um, we're, and hugs and to you as well. Um, not making a sukkah at home. We'll probably go to, go to shul at some point and eat the sukkah there. But, you know, we'll, we'll do it. We'll get it done. But, yeah, no, so we're going to make a sukkah one year, but... 
This is not the year. Too much stuff going on. You and Andrew are the best commentators for this game. You give a lot of entertainment hype at watching the games. Oh, thank you very much. I mean, I enjoy our full com commentary team, right? I like having the pros with AC and Juicy J mixed in. I think it's really important to have that perspective. And I think Andrew and I did a great job for the years that it was just the two of us. But if there was one element that was missing, it was having that pro perspective. And then when they brought in, in 2021, when they brought in um, Eric and Josh, that added a lot to the conversation. And then with Eric moving on and Juicy moving in, um, been really happy with all that. Zenko on Twitch, yo, how are you? Um, and the Galaxy Battles only teams won something, or some players won a prize. Like the hundred thousand dollars was split between there were three, there were eight teams, and they each earned a piece of the prize pool. I think the the top team won thirty one thousand dollars split between the three of them. Yeah, see, like she is saying, um, Leslie was fun as hell. Yeah, to each to each their own. Um. Uh, Rich is by far and away the absolute best. I mean, yeah, I mean, I was the only one who was meant to really, who really was, who really like knew the games in and out. And when you when you look at like the schedule, like <laughs> I've worked with Courage in a number of ways before. It's not my first time casting with him, but I've worked with him a lot in other capacities. The dude is so insanely busy, and he gets all these offers to come be like the celebrity caster guest on 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 all these things. Um, and you know, the expectation is that he'll come in, give some, t give some hype, and have a great time. And that's what he did a really good job of. Um, you know, you can't expect him to be an expert on like every single game. What about the Etro? I don't have, I don't have one at my house, but I'll shake it. I'll shake, I'll shake a little Lulav this year. What is the hashtag for? Um, that's just the hashtag they're using on social media for the event. GKR Leagues. Leslie was having fun when she was having fun, but when she won the 2v2, I was just impressed. Well, I did give Leslie that deck. I did give Leslie that uh, that Golem E-Drag deck. Why does everyone ban EVO recruits? Well, these, these bans are active for the entire match here, right? It's not like each individual time they ban it. Um, these ma these these are these are um, full match bans, so they will be active for both of the first two sets currently. But if we go to the third set, which it looks like we might be doing here in a minute, they will not be active because that set is dual mode, which already has built-in deck restrictions. You recommended a golem deck to someone? <laughs> yeah, Smurf Blade. I know. Well, I knew that if you're gonna give in a two v two match, you're gonna give somebody a deck that is. Um, that is uh, noob. That is not. Th that is noob friendly. Um, Golem. Golem E Drag. Golem Nato E Drag was a pretty easy recommendation. And she was uh, going. She was partnered with CWA. So, yeah, I, I just gave her that. They didn't even plan their decks beforehand. I gave her that the day before. And there's actually a really great clip on my Twitter. If you guys want to see it, I'll link it in the chat here. Give me one minute. Let me go ahead and find that. There's a great clip on my Twitter that I should load onto my YouTube probably. Um, but here, I'll link that twit, that clip. Here you go. There's a great clip on my Twitter um, of the moment where uh, Courage found out that I had uh, set up Leslie to beat him. How am I doing today? I'm doing pretty well. All right. That was it. King of the Hill. King of the Hill in favor of CM Esports. We are going three sets, folks. I thought this might be a really quick day today, but it's not that quick. We're going to one more set. I thought you were supposed to be impartial. Impartial. Well, not in that. That was the show match, right? That wasn't like a real match. That was just them playing for fun. It was not part of the competition. So, yeah, of course I snuck some help to mess with Courage and to support CWA in the in the, in the showcase match that had no competitive implications. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Um, back to the I'm Go back to the robot. Let me go. I'm trying to find the uh, all the stuff for the World Finals. Because I know that there's a... How does all this work? Give me one second. How they get into the... Because I know there's like a grand season final of all this. Do, 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 do. Um, let's see. The world... Fi okay, so this is the the, the, the fall split. Um, let's see. The winner of a split qualifies to the world finals for this season. 
which will have a um, have a eighteen thousand dollar total prize pool, seven grand of the first team. Um, let's see, how do you but how do you qualify for the world finals? That's what I don't remember exactly. Is it just being the split winner? That'll be too few teams. Um, let me. Eh. I need to figure out where they have like how the qual how the world finals qualifier portion works um fall split fall split um oh interesting i wonder if the world finals is is only let's go ahead and jump into gameplay is solo uh I'm very confused at how the world... How, I, you know what? Let me ask... Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who saw that, who thought that was funny. It was a, it was a good time. Um, let me ask the production here. Um, where can I find... Can I find the info on how World Finals works? I need to figure that out. Muhammad asking, does EN77 have a team? Look at the description. All of the team rosters are listed in the description below. Why is Royal Giant suddenly getting so much more play today? This might be a good Smurf Blade question. Why is Royal Giant suddenly... Royal Giant's been mid and competitive for weeks. Why is everyone playing Royal Giant today? Royal Giant didn't get a buff. There was no RG buff. And looking at the support cards for RG, there's no RG support cards buff. Barbs and Knight being nerfed, does that just, like, does that make, did that suddenly make RG, I mean, maybe a more compelling option, but. Why is everyone playing Executioner, says Nick. Um... Partially, it's been rising in popularity a lot, um, especially because uh, um, especially because lava got so big. I'm a little surprised it's still being played so much with the lava nerf, but people are just enjoying it. It's a good defensive control deck, um, and it's I think it's really good against lower level competition. I don't think it's as good against the higher level competition, especially not when suddenly we're back into a monk meta for some strange reason. Um, but I think people get used to crushing lower level, like you know, lower tier players on with it, and think they're going to bring it in here. It has not been as successful competitively as um, as I think people are expecting. But it can do that, right? That when that XE damage comes in, especially if you do a little NATO work right here, as that execution is going to do, you can get so much defensive value and a ton of damage offensively. And look at that! Boom, boom, boom! Getting in there. Has to be controlled. Forces a response. Nice and tanky. So there you go. Smurf saying I think it's a safe deck no matter the meta. Fair enough. Bomb tower nerf. Certainly that might have affected it. Um, it was worse. It was worse before, but now people are having no idea what to use, so it's reliable. That's a good point, right? People are a little. People need to figure out the meta, and the balance changes went live hours ago, and now they're trying to play in a competition. So, sure. Um. Almost no air decks. Yeah, it still has value, and you're seeing that value here. It's just a good control deck, right? Like, you have the single target defensive damage from the Inferno Tower, and then you have the, the big splash damage from the Exe, and then NATO to work together with all of that. So if you're a good control player, it's just a good control deck. And again, with the Magic Archer nerf, and some people saying that Magic Archer might be, um, might be dead, which... That seems a little extreme to me. Um, but between the Evo Knight being nerfed, the Bomb Tower being nerfed, and the Magic Archer being nerfed, the Remy deck might be gone. And people who like to play a, bit of, a little bit of minor pressure or minor control, Remy deck being gone leads to some trying to find some options. Ah, oh, that minor going to get one, but not more. But look at this. This is actually just staying on the board, right? There's nothing that Titan can do to really get the XE off. And so the pressure just continues. Little minor NATO. Oh, what a great minor NATO from Hugo. Can he beat it? No, he can't. 
and Titan gets it done. Oh, that was a fun finish there. Oh, I muted myself. Let's go ahead and put in our replay here. Take a look at that finish. Take a look at that finish here. They're getting... Look, look at the, the damage comes in. That hog damage. Let's go back just a little bit here. Oh, wait. That's not that's not the correct replay. Didn't I hit the replay button? That was not. I was like, that's not the right replay at all. Did I not get... Did the replay not save here? I thought I hit the button. Oh, weird. I guess... Right? Today's the... I guess the replay did not save, even though I hit the replay button. Aw, replay button. That's one of yesterday's replays. Oh, well. Game number one to Titan. Um, let's see. Fisherman buff? No. All the buffs are listed, though. Um, the bands are glitched. It is not showing. Oh, there's no, there's, there's no bands in duel mode, folks. This is the final set. Since duel, you inherently have bands, since you can't repeat cards. There's no bands in duel mode. So... Yeah, you, it, it would be redundant to be banning cards in dual mode, as you might imagine. And it'd be it'd be extra too; it'd be too much. Um, but speaking of what's not available here in this set, uh, Titan will not have log or fireball. Obviously, RG fisherman monk, but like a lot of stuff that you don't really care about in other decks, right? The fish boy, the monk, even the phoenix RG. So really, log fireball are the two big ones. NATO and NATO minor poison out. Evo Knight out for Hugo. Um, let's see if Titan goes something to abuse that NATO being out. Maybe a little hog, maybe a little mina. It's always daytime in here, baby. Let's go. That's right. That's right. Told you. Hog Rider. It's just dual mode 101. And so Hugo going Fishman to have some control over the hoggy. And gonna be going Royal Giant here. And everyone's getting real getting real into the comfort today. Where was he in 77 of the Galaxy Battles? Well, was he on a team for Galaxy Battles? Um I don't remember. I don't I don't I don't remember that. Hog Rider. Gonna get some damage here. Fun fact, because it takes the monk until the third shot to counter that, to, to knock something back, I don't believe there is any way to actually knock the hog away from the tower. I haven't, you know, I haven't tried. Has, has anyone experimented with, is there a way to prevent all hog shots when the King Tower is activated with the Monk? Has anyone tested that? Bomb Tower Evo Knight nerf make the Valka slightly more compelling option, but most likely not. But here's the question, Smurf Blade. Is it more compelling when you're able to, s s knowing that you have Evo Firecracker as an option? Right? That I think that's the bigger question. Not like, is the Evo Knight better than the, or Evo, is the Fire, is the Valk better than the Evo Knight because the Bomb Tower nerf now? Or is it just, hey, if if there was no Firecracker, I think that you might, there that might be the argument. Um, if Monk attacks before Hawk, um, I think you need an East Press with the Monk, but I don't think it's possible with just the Monk. Even if the King Tower is activated though, because that got very close. I'm wondering if you could place the Monk low enough to body block just enough to knock back uh, to uh, to to knock the um, the hog. I, I'm not I'm not saying it's for sure, but it's worth testing. Is there any placement? I don't think it's possible with this placement. Maybe it's only maybe it can only be possible if there's a a hog plays played inside. With the actual like with the hog placement, I think you're probably right. There is no option, but it'd be curious. The experimentation. Let the experimentation begin. Still playing bomb tower. Still playing Bomb Tower with this. Interesting. Titan didn't even run a building last game and still playing Bomb Tower with this with this setup. I don't like that. I would have liked Tesla or Inferno Tower. Or even Cannon, really. Can see it being doable close to frame perfect. Yeah. Yeah, Cherry with the point. Ask Muhammad Light. Yeah, I think that's the real 
That's the real question. But hey, once if one person does it one time, it'll suddenly become a thing people do. You know what I mean? Hoggy Hog gets one. RG gets into it starts getting into firing range. Boom, boom. This is very, very close here. Remember, Titan does have match point for Tropical Gaming. Oh, that's a big little... That's some... Oh, not as big as I thought. I thought that fire was going to get more chip. It does not. 1328, 1404, top hand side. 1346, 1223 at the bottom. This is where that Tesla, the Cannon, or the Inferno Dragon, the Inferno Tower would have been a better choice here by t for Titan. Not really understanding the Bomb Tower when you're going with this Valk version. Does the Hog get a shot? It does not. No shot. And then now suddenly, Evo RG into the right-hand side. Bomb Tower low. Fireball going to be make easy pickings of that. You need to get, find some way. Is there a snowball onto the Evo RG? There is, but there's now the classic RG to the left-hand side. Does the Bomb Tower come out for Titan? And he misses the Bomb Tower. Titan misses the Bomb Tower. We're going to be going to game number three, folks. Titan plays it too low. Hugo ties things up. Let's go. Hey, and tossing plastic. In the building, hey, dude, I uh, I had I had the discs that you sent me in this room yesterday, but as you guys might see, I'm on green screen today because I'm actually moving out of this office into my into my new space. Um, so I don't have all my discs are not in here. But thank you very much, dude. I can't wait to throw those. Um, because you placed the monk too far back, might not get all three hits. Yeah, it's no, it's a, it's a hard thing to figure out. Um, hey, Rich, just wanted to say you're amazing during the Samsung event. I had no idea you knew so much about Clash of Clans and Brawl Stars. Also, you were definitely the comp voice of the event needed. Sure. I'm, hey, thank you very much. I'm really really happy. Um, big shout out to Eric Onehive and to Corey, the Coach Corey from, not Coach Corey, but Corey, the coach of the Tribe Brawl Stars team. Those two guys put some real time in to help me get up to speed on both of those games. And um, yeah, I couldn't have done the job that I did without their help. So uh, big, big shout out to both of those guys for coming through. And I also worked worked really, really hard. Um, to, pre pre to prepare for both of those. I felt great about the Clash of Clans casting, and I felt very good about the Brawl Stars casting, but some more... I needed a little... I needed, I needed just a... I needed, like, an ex... I needed, like, one more day for Brawl Stars. I needed one more day to be t as, as ready as I would have liked. Um, but still, it was pretty fun. It was really, really fun. Um, sometimes your live notification will come through, so I consistently missed yesterday. Oh, no! Whoa! Well, you're here today. Um, and that's what matters. That's what matters, is that you're here today. Here we go. Game three. Everything on the line. Match point for both teams. Who will do it? Hugo or Titan? Let's go. RG out on both sides. Log, Snowball, Fireball, EQ out for Titan. Maybe Titans... They might, they might, might we see a Lava Lava battle here? Evo Barbs did take a slight nerf. Damage and HP both. And look at that Loon push to the right-hand side. He might get some Loon damage here. No, he does not. A couple Barb shots. And then well-timed defense by Titan. So we're going to see a bit of a, a bit of a situation. Anil saying, after level 15 updated Clash Royale is boring. Well, uh, if... It, here's I'll say this. Level 15 might be frustrating... But I don't think it changed what the game is. Like, it doesn't change whether the game's fun to play or not. It or let me put this. Whether the game whether an actual game of Clash Royale is boring or fun it has nothing to do with, with whether a level 15 exists. Right? Like, level 15 makes certain aspects annoying. But right now it also only affects the trophy road. It doesn't affect Path of Legends, doesn't affect challenges. Like, so unless you unless trophy road is the thing you really care about, which interesting, sure, do your thing. Um like, level 15 didn't really change much. Like, I have felt almost no impact of level 15. Because I don't care about Trophy Road. Are you aware... Oh, it does affect Clan Wars. But, like, that's... Yeah, but who does Clan Wars? That's a lot of damage. Zap finally gets in. Um, are you aware of any pros that play Clash of Clans or Brawl? Yeah, I mean, a lot. Especially Brawl. Especially Brawl. Um, 
Some play Clash of Clans, and they, maybe they play it casually. Um, but a lot of them do play Brawl um, to a decent level. Like, Air Surfer did not play Clash of Clans as well as he can play. He kind of made a, made a, had a bit of a, a mess up. I think it was because, like, his, what he came in with was wrong because of something with the system. I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, but a lot of the Clash, a lot of the, the Clash of Clans play, or Clash Royale players have, like, twenty to 30,000 trophies in Brawl. Very aggressive Lava Hound right at the bridge. Barb's right under the Lava Hound. Arrows will clear a lot of that out. That's That loon is a problem. That loon is a problem. Can he stop the loon? And he does barely stop the loon. And the barbs of Hugo get on tower. The barbs under the push are going to do this for Hugo. Sea Monsters makes the huge comeback in this event. They were getting shellacked early on. Looked like it was going to be a quick win for Tropical Gaming. And just... The amazing comeback for this team. Who boy. GG well played. What a come from behind win. Way to do it. And that's the kind of win you love, right? The battling back from adversity. That's the one you really want. Um, let's see. I think they're going to give us some. Oh, yeah. Here's the here's the full results from this week. Uh, as you see, Rising Sun Esports losing to Shot Kalalis yesterday. Shot Kalalis is, is uh, I believe, going to be 2-0 overall in the league. Inosis 2 owing MKers. And then, as you can see, this morning was supposed to be Olympus Squad versus French SWAT. French SWAT. Did not submit their rosters in time, so free win for Olimpo Squad. And then Sea Monsters with the come from behind victory here against Tropical Gaming. Very, very well done. Musama, uh, Muhammad saying, I did not see that coming. See what he says there? S-E-A-C? You, you, you get it? Nicely done, sir. I support you. Um, what is it about a skill? What is it about a player that makes skill transfer from widely different games such as Brawl and CR? Um, so if you're, I mean, how does someone like a, how is Michael Jordan like a, a great, like how does how do players go? Michael Jordan played basketball, but also was able to play like minor league baseball, which is pretty good. Or Barry Sanders, who played professional baseball and professional football, right? If you're good, you're like there's some people who just are skilled and have that ability to master something. Um, I don't know who's I don't know anybody who's like pro level in CR and in brawl. Um, they're close to right. They're, like I know Mr. Cena, aka Droy, um, was uh, semi pro in Brawl, so there's definitely some some crossover like that. But uh, yeah, I don't know anyone who's like really doing both at that level. Um, give me one. Jordan was Jordan was bad at baseball. Jordan was good enough to play baseball in the minor leagues. He was good enough to like. You can't say he's he was that bad at baseball when he was able to be okay. He was able to be okay in minor league baseball. You know what I mean? Um, but like Barry Sanders is um, like, or Deion Sanders is a is a better example. Um, Barry's like uh, uh, Bo Jackson, better example, right? There are some guys who are definitely better examples of uh, multi sports professional athletes for sure than that. Um, cool. Well, this, folks, has been absolutely a blast. As always, I really love hanging out with y'all. And uh, if you're on Twitch, hang out for just another minute, and we'll go ahead and get someone to, we'll find someone to raid. And if you're on YouTube, I'll see y'all back here. Um, no streams this weekend. I'm going to be preparing some stuff. We'll have GKR next week, and I've got some stuff prepared. Uh, that we're going to do some videos coming out soon. So, uh, yeah, as always, um, the most important thing, right? Be excellent to each other, and party on, dude. Peace. All right, Twitch.